We are rolling right from New Delhi, Sarah Week India Energy Forum. It is the last and the third day that we have our presence here. And all the big voices is what you will hear right here at CNBC TV 18. To kickstart the show, let's get in a conversation from, from the OPEC Secretary General, His Excellency Mohammed Barkendo, who says that it is imperative for the global producers to ensure that the global demand growth from India and other developing countries is protected. Let's listen in. We are beginning to see uh, headwinds mm -hmm. uh, in the supply-demand balance, particularly going into 2019, okay. uh, due largely to factors that are outside the fundamentals mm. uh, of oil. However, uh, we as OPEC working with our partners uh, in the norm OPEC in the declaration of cooperation mm. uh, had met in June and took stock of the implementation of the supply adjustments for yes. the 18 months since January mm. of last year mm. and uh, came to the conclusion that there was need for us to change course mm. because uh, to restore balance mm. uh, to the oil market uh, it's a continuous uh, uh, strife uh, of all producers uh, due partly uh, to some of the variables sure. uh, that may not necessarily be under the control of uh, our producers. Okay. As a result of that, uh, we have been able to bring down so far mm. our uh, conformity levels mm. uh, that you refer to as compliance. Right which had overshot the 100% level yes. in June to 147%. Yes. Yes. And we said, wait a minute, uh, mm. we had surpassed our goal. Mm. Uh, it was highly commendable. It mm. showed mm. the commitment of all the participating countries. That's right. Uh, I think it's, it's the first time ever that... And this was the first time. And I think the severity of the downturn mm. also had a role to play in this. Mm. So from July, we have started to relax uh, uh, supply in mm. order to bring down mm. the conformity from 147 percent to 100 percent. Right. And this is still work in progress. Okay. But uh, so far so good. The very near future, we have seen the OPEC members, some of them increase production to ensure that the Iran supply gap is filled in. But on the other side, there also are concerns about the global spare capacity at, at, at levels which can actually uh, continue to add premium to crude oil prices. You have touched on a very important issue uh, for the industry as a whole and that is uh, spare capacity which normally serves as a buffer right. or an insurance uh, against uh, emergencies mm. uh, in terms of supply. Now this is a function of conscious investment decisions taken either by producing countries or by companies or a combination of both and we have seen in the last couple of years, as a consequence of this severe downturn, sharp contraction in investments, mm. especially in E&P. Mm. And with the rising demand uh, that we are witnessing, uh, available spare capacity is gradually but steadily thinning out. You spoke about the world uh, uh, global demand as well. So put out those numbers for us as well. What is your sense on the global oil demand as we go ahead from here? And where do you see the India contribution to that? Demand will continue to grow by about 14.5 million barrels a day up, up to 2014. Per the bulk, the mm. bulk of this mm. growth mm the bulk of this growth will be coming from India uh, uh, significantly. Mm. Therefore, it is in our interest as producers to ensure that this healthy growth in India and other consuming countries is protected.
Well, that, of course, was the OPEC General Secretary talking about the international and the Indian oil market. But we also spoke to the biggest voice in the gas space when it comes to the global market, Martin Houston, who says that India is a seller's dream right now with the kind of growth that they are looking and estimating going forward in sense of demand. He also says that the LNG demand is huge, the supply is just about catching up and the prices and volatility for the oil and LNG would continue to be on the higher side for the next three to four years. There's no doubt that LNG uh, is becoming in shorter and shorter supply. Uh, there's a good reason for it. Uh, no, um, well only very few investment decisions have been taken in LNG. Sure recently um, right. and it takes a long time to get hmm. a project from to get inception, it on board. to get it hmm. on, on, on stream hmm. so you know it's going to be you know this condition is going to be with us probably for another four or five years until new supplies uh, over and above what's being developed in uh, construction at the moment comes on stream so okay. you know I think we are in for a period of increased price volatility going forward yeah. um, and um, access to supply is going to be important. You were a part of the PM dialogue yesterday, you were in the meeting. What do you really derive from the kind of direction and dialogue that uh, India really seems to be taking in and do you really see the policy reforms a solution to the kind of imports, demand and the ballooning import bill, the population, uh, all of that really seems to be tackled? You know, it was it was said fairly firmly by uh, some of the, the the state chairman that we do have a lot of new import facilities being built. That we mm. do have a lot of new 9,000 kilometres of gas pipelines under construction. Mm. All of this is great progress, mm. and all of this will lead to more gas in the economy. However, the the key points uh, I think for me, um, and, and one of my great takeaways here is that this is a mar this is a price sensitive market. And you know, local markets need local prices, and you know that w what we have to find as an industry is a way to find a local pricing solution that suits India. 15% gas penetration is what the the, um, hmm. the administration uh, is is rooting for, um, balanced with coal, but clean coal. India, for some time, I understand, is trying to get its mix right, whether it's in sense of imports or whether it's about burning this fuel. Uh, what, what is the sense that you got on how well are we in that direction? You've had uh, changes in the legislation around EMP mm. uh, and that you know, seems to be improving the, you know, the, the attractiveness, if you like, mm. of India as a, an EMP destination. Um, and then we've got to tackle imports. So the imports need you know, infrastructure that does exist today, but we need more. A lot of investments. A lot of investments and also, by the way, it needs... Um, it, it needs uh, transparency in the market. Um, it needs a, a slow deregulation to a point where the market starts to set its own prices. So, you know, a lot of work to do. But you know, I, you know, for me, I'm very optimistic. I mean, I ended my session yesterday by saying, you know, as a seller, I love this market because it's big, it's growing, mm. uh, and, and challenges it may have, uh, but it's very attractive for a seller. So, uh, a final question, Martin. Is there any other market which is growing like India and uh, which has an equal bullish uh, forecast projections as, as strong as India, really? Well, China. Okay. I mean, I mean it's the, <laughs> the, the whole, it's the whole India-China thing all over again. And um, China's growing at an extraordinary pace. Okay. Um, but the same le sort of levels of gas penetration. Gas penetration here in India is about 7%. Gas mm. penetration in India, sorry, in China, China. is about 7%. Mm. So <coughs> it's about the same. Mm. China has um, said that it wants to go to 10%. India has said it wants to go to 15%. Actually, in, in real terms, that's probably about the same. But you know, they're both fast-growing markets, and they're both pulling new supplies of LNG, uh, which is good for everybody. Well, we also spoke to the heads of the Indian oil companies. Remember, the PM yesterday did speak to the global oil companies, the upstream and the downstream companies, and the Indian heads as well to take solutions, find solutions and opinions rather on the upcoming strong demand expectations. We also spoke to the heads of Kane India and HPCL. Let's listen into that conversation. The prices rose up all of a sudden and I think as a country we were not prepared for such a steep rise mm -hmm. and 80 percent imports are not helping and uh, you know crude prices are expected to be strong for a while. 
at least till the middle of next year. Uh, I don't think you know production can come out that quickly. Starting with exploration, it's a long drawn. But I think what the government has done in uh, creating a future for the industry and uh, is really the OLP, which has been very successful in uh, providing uh, the new policy on EOR. Uh, which is which is great to encourage uh, late field production. I think the government's done a great job in uniform in unifying the hydrocarbon policy to include shale. So I think a, you know the combination of the three things will unlock something in the near future. Maybe not a substantial amount, mm -hmm. but I think over the medium to long term they are absolutely the right steps here. So you spoke about OALP. You won 42 uh, blocks just recently. Uh, what is your strategy? What will be the timeline and investment that we can expect? Well, we, you know, in just the exploration phase, we would uh, we think that the investment is going to be about a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we discover it, taking it into development, etc., would require a lot more capital. Mm -hmm. uh, our balance sheet is very well funded to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think to make it, you know, we have two objectives: is to uh, bring it online faster. And create uh, and, and do uh, uh, create more reserves as quickly as possible. So we would be and we are actually reaching out to you know boutique and large firms both in mm -hmm. the whole world okay. uh, to help us expedite this process. Okay. And um, you know we uh, we had invited a lot of the firms. They were here last last week. We had 51 companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect to follow that up with another meeting late this month mm -hmm. and uh, late November. Um, what's the sense you're getting from your Rajasthan field where you are exploring shale gas? What are the possibilities? How much investment do you see? And what are the possibilities in terms of actually getting shale gas there and utilizing it? Well, you know, uh, it's, I'll just talk about the investment first. We are investing, uh, we have committed capital of over two and a half billion now uh, in the last uh, year or so. Yeah. We have 13 rigs working on there and part of it includes not shale but tight oil and tight gas. So we expect to, uh, you know, take our production up from about uh, 190, 200,000 to over 300,000 barrels by middle of next year. Uh, that's our objective. Uh, the investment, the, you know, the rigs are working. We're uh, debottlenecking the fac uh, facilities to uh, increase our fluid handling capacity. And uh, we are doing a very exciting project on ASP, which is the more... Uh, advanced form of polymer mm -hmm. so it's the single largest project of its kind in the world and we are very excited to you know have it come alive yeah. okay um coming to production sharing contract what is the status with regards to rajasthan uh, because now it's in the high court i understand what will be the next move well we are working with the government i mean they had requested us for a lot of information and as they required to do due diligence mm -hmm. prior to that so all that has been submitted to the government and we expect to hear from them pretty quick, uh, soon. The rising crude prices, the, the, the way the scenario is, is mostly decided by the producers. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, is, it may be a short term gain, but it is not in the longer interest of the producers also. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, it, it does affect the uh, economic growth of the consuming countries. Mm -hmm. And if that growth doesn't happen, then the, uh, the demand of the oil will also get impacted. So the message was that the, the producing countries should be uh, taking into cognizance the, uh, uh, the requirement of the consuming countries as well mm -hmm. while deciding the, the pricing. Uh, definitely the people who are very bullish on the, uh, on the crude prices in the near future, they may be unwinding their positions to some extent. Mm -hmm. That is one possibility. Mm -hmm. And with that, it's time for a very short break on Commodity Champions. But stay tuned as we get you much more bigger voices on the other side of this very short break.